Good morning everybody, it's Charlie and welcome back to another video on the Chatting Leeds YouTube channel. Hope everyone is having a great start to their Friday morning so far. Just before we get into this video, please make sure that you are smashing that like button. It really does help get the video out there to more people. Please subscribe to the channel if you are brand new as well and hit that notification bell. And of course, get all of your thoughts and opinions into the comment section down below. It's time for another installment of Bite Size Leads, all the latest goings on. In the wonderful world of Leeds United Football Club, make sure you're grabbing a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a beer or a vodka, wherever you are in this fine world on match day. As Leeds United are taking on Chef Wednesday at Hillsborough this evening under the lights. Um, we'll come to that in just a little bit. But firstly, let's get into the main news of last night, which was that Lagi Ramazani has officially signed for the club on a four-year deal, um, £10 million fee. Yeah, absolutely buzzing that we've managed to get a signing through the door. It's been too long since Jaden Bogle came through the door. Um, a lot of negativity around the club, you know, Farker, the 49ers, the team itself. And it's amazing, isn't it, that a signing can come through and everyone's uplifted, everyone's upbeat and everyone's more confident going into tonight's game now. Um, it's unclear at this stage whether he will be eligible to play or not. I've heard a few people say he won't be, but even if he isn't, regardless of what happens tonight at Hillsborough, you know, at least we know that we've got Ramazani coming in um, and hopefully he can add goals and assists into our forward line. You know, he is seen as the Crescencio Somerville replacement. I wouldn't be putting too much pressure on him. You know, it's it's a new team, a new manager, new teammates, a new league. And, um, you know, it's a tough and physical league in the championship. He has played in England before as he was part of the Scum Academy. Um, but I won't hold that against him. Um, but, yeah, like, even in his interview that Leeds have posted out, it seems like he's eager to get going, eager to get started. And eager to make it, you know, to make his stamp on this team, and I'm I'm all for it. You know, the the clips that I've seen of him on YouTube, he does look like a very neat, tidy player, um, skillful player as well, quick, um, quick dribbler of the ball, and he does remind me of Somerville in the way that he attacks defenders. So, yeah, absolutely buzzing that we've got this one over the line. It's still not enough, though, in my opinion. We still need to get. Um, some other signings, obviously there's Dejan Rubicic, uh, FC Colm, um, who seems like he's really eager to move to Leeds United. I think that one will be our next signing. I can see that being sorted out quite quickly. I think he'll be signed in time for Hull next week, without a doubt. And then there's Roland Salai as well, who, let's be honest, is a Premier League level player. <clears throat> um, you know, the, the stats speak for itself. I think... Owen was saying on the White Wall podcast the other night that he has scored two goals against England for Hungary. Um, and I think other than Schroberslai, who's out of Liverpool, he's like their second best player. So again, <clears throat> it would be amazing if Leeds could get this one over the line. Not 100% sure that we will, but he is a name that keeps getting linked with us. So there's no smoke without fire. So that's definitely one to keep an eye on as well. Let's just briefly speak about Willie Nonto as well who, according to reports, is pushing for a move, um, which is sad to hear if that is the case. Obviously, the only people saying this are your ITKs on Twitter that claim that they know everything. Um, but yeah, I, if, if he is looking to leave, then that's a shame. I think he's got a real opportunity this season as Nonto um, to be that main man. Um, you know, Somerville was one of the main men last season, along with Rutter, and we've lost them both now. So it's time for Nonto to step up. I think if Nonto sees that Leeds are making signings and good quality signings at that, it may make him rethink, you know, if he is pushing for a move, because if he's got good players around him, you know, he'll have Dan James, he'll have, you know, Aronson, maybe Perot, if Perot improves, you've got Joseph up top, you know, you've got Ramazani coming in. You know, and him as well. That's a good forward line in the championship. You know, Burnley might have started off well, but they're losing players left, right, and centre. They have to sell for PSR reasons. So they won't be as strong moving forward. So it's our opportunity now to 
try and keep the best players that we've got now and, you know, add to it and move forward. So, honestly, you know, I've, I've heard Wolves are in for Nonto. I mean, if you're going to go to any Premier League club, why would you go to Wolves? I just, I just don't understand it, but it is what it is. If he is pushing to leave, then that is disappointing to hear. But if not, get your head down, get your head screwed on, work with the players in and around you and, you know, build from there because I think we've got the potential to have a good forward line if Willie Nonto does decide to stay at the club. And then let's just have a little brief preview ahead of tonight's game then just to finish the video, guys. You know, Leeds, as I said, taking on Chef Wednesday this evening at Hillsborough um, in a fierce Yorkshire derby. There's nothing really goes on when Leeds play Chef Wednesday. It's usually just a quiet, timid affair, isn't it? not um hopefully there'll be no trouble from the crowd this time and you know I, I think there'll be tackles flying in it's going to be a big physical game you know if you haven't already go and check out the live preview that i did with isaac and with longy last night it was a good chat about the game tonight over there and you know isaac and longy did make a good point you know could daniel farker play pat bamford up front as it's going to be a bit more physical with their center backs and then when they're tired bring Joseph on to add that pace in behind. I thought it was a good point raised and it is something that he could potentially do. You know, Farker could look at it and go, you know, Joseph hasn't scored in his opening few games, but but neither is Paddy. So <clears throat> both offer different things, both better at each other at different things. But I'll be honest, I think he keeps the team exactly the same, even with Gruev in midfield, which I don't agree with at all. I think Joe Rothwell needs to come in. And it makes perfect sense why Farker's looking at Dejan Lubacic as well. I think he could come in and be a really good midfielder for Leeds United. You know, Gruev, he's good. And Nampadu is very, very good. But together, I think they're just too similar and they're just offer no balance in the midfield area whatsoever. So I think if Rothwell comes in, he's a bit more forward thinking. He gets his head up more. He progresses with the ball up the pitch. And um, I, I think he would just be a lot better to come in um, I think he'd be better suited to this game as well than what Gruev would be. But again, I'm not the manager. I don't get paid the big bucks. I imagine Daniel Farker will keep the team exactly the same, even with Perot in the 10, which again, don't even get me started on that. It's not. I'm not going to bash him anymore because I personally at this point, I don't think it's his fault. I think it's a tactical issue and it's Farker's issue is that how can he think that Perot in the 10 is working? I would rather you put Aronson in there Genuinely, at least Harrison has a low centre of gravity. He's neat and tidy on the ball. Adds a bit more pace, quick turn of pace as well. Um, yes, Perot is a better finisher, but if you're playing him for his finishing ability, then play him up top with Joseph and have, have, have a two up top. But again, he won't do that because at the minute he is a bit predictable with formation and with personnel, and that's why we need depth so that we can catch other teams out with our team selection but honestly like i said guys i think it'll be a a tough physical game there'll be tackles flying in all over the shop um you know a, a yorkshire derby at hillsborough their fans will be bang up for it they've had a bit of a mixed start you know a four nil win on the opening day and then a four nil defeat last week at sunderland so swings and roundabouts for them i guess um the one positive is that Leeds united are unbeaten in the league so far <laughs> with two draws but we need a win now. A win after signing Ramazani last night, a win tonight will just lift the fan base to a whole new level. You know, sign some more players through the week and then we're going into Hull with a much stronger team and hopefully the fan base is back to being positive. So that is it for this morning's edition of Bite Size Leads, guys. Really hope that you've all enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you're smashing that like button. It really does help get the... Um, upload out to more people let's get more eyes on the channel we're about 25 subscribers away from hitting 3000 if you wouldn't mind subscribing as well that would be amazing um hit the notification bell so that you're aware of when i'm uploading and going live and of course get all your thoughts and opinions into the comment section down below and if you haven't already go and check out the white wall from last um from the other night as well the latest upload on there it was very very good um and yeah like i say guys we're praying we are praying for a Leeds United win this evening. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and I will see you in a bit. Cheers.